everyone happy evening a very good evening i hope and i believe all of you are doing well a quick nod whether the audio visual is all good so that we can kick start this session for last minute revision for radiology and we are going to discuss images that are pretty short short for fmg exam like uh, i i am hoping that majority of the questions in radiology will be covered in the today's session so a quick nod whether it's all good Okay, that's great. So, without any further delay, let's start with the discussion for the today's session. Hi, Zaid. Hi, Har Arsh, uh, Nishta, Superna. I can see all of you. All right, hello. Uh, let's start with the discussion. Hi, Mihir. Uh, happy evening, everyone. So, we are going to discuss uh, images which are most frequently asked in the exam, and these are like must, must watch before your exam. Uh, so let's start with the discussion. I have divided it into system wise. So first is uh, emergency radiology, the most important images. Uh, okay, okay, Zaid, half lives car revision. Remind me, I'll do it towards the end. Okay, okay. So in emergency radiology, let's start with the discussion, and I hope the images are clear. So the first one, tell me what is this? Is it a CT or MR? The most important to be seen here is when the bones are white. Okay. When the bone cortex is white, it is CD scan. When it is black, it is MRI. This is a contrast CT with the vessels which are white. And what is the diagnosis in the first image here? Absolutely right. It is pulmonary embolism. Okay, so the first image here basically uh, identifying the anatomy is also important. Remember, this is the right side. This is the left side. In radiology, it's the opposite. And remember, SAP from right to left, it is SAP. That is, this is superior vena cava, ascending aorta and the pulmonary trunk. And we have uh, and we have that this is the pulmonary artery showing the filling defect. So this is pulmonary embolism okay this is pulmonary embolism very very important and remember we have the predisposed surgery patient is immobilized and then the patient presents with acute chest pain there is dyspnea and tachypnea and this is pulmonary embolism remember we have wells criteria okay modified wells criteria is used for pulmonary embolism what is the investigation of choice for pulmonary embolism it is CTPA, CT pulmonary angiograph. What is the screening test for pulmonary embolism? Remember, it is D dimer. Okay, the screening test is D dimer. All right. Now, going to the next image here. Uh, the video is giving some problem. I hope no. Okay. Look at this image. What do you think is the diagnosis here? Right, this is the descending aorta, okay, this is the descending aorta which is showing this uh, dissection, it is divided into two, so this is dissection. Now perfect. Okay, great. So the diagnosis here is aortic dissection and is this Stanford A or Stanford B? Remember that there is Stanford classification which is used for aortic dissection. A is for ascending aorta involvement. B is ascending aorta not involved here. It is descending aorta. The ascending aorta is normal. So this is Stanford B. So remember that in Stanford B, if the patient is stable, we can do medical management. We give beta blockers. Remember B for beta blockers. 
In stand 4A, it is surgery that needs to be done. And aortic dissection, hypertension is the most important risk factor. Okay, hypertension is the most important risk factor. You will have a history of a hypertensive male patient, let's say 45 year old, presenting with acute chest pain and unequal blood pressures in the right upper limb and the left upper limb. Okay, remember it's an unequal pressure in the upper limbs. Okay. Next image, let's have a look at this image. What do you think is the diagnosis in this image here? What do you think is the diagnosis in the third image here? This is a non contrast CT of the brain showing this hyperdensity in the sylvian fissure, the hyperdensity in the sylvian fissure. So, this is acute hemorrhage. Remember, acute hemorrhage is hyperdense on CT. So, this is a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Okay, this is subarachnoid hemorrhage. Nishta, this is not Sturge Weber. Uh, a good uh, correlation, but Sturge Weber is something which would show tram track calcification. Okay, it would show tram track calcification. This is not calcification. This is blood. Subarachnoid hemorrhage. Need PG 22 question. Aneurysm leads to what kind of hemorrhage? Right, easy one. Aneurysm leads to subarachnoid hemorrhage. Patient will present with worst headache of life. That is thunder clap headache. Okay, what is the first investigation in any acute hemorrhage? It is non-contrast CT. Okay, it is non-contrast CT for acute hemorrhage uh, always. All right, let's go to the next image. What do you think is the diagnosis here? Now, here in this image, you see the difference in the more black right side and you see that there is, uh, there is no vascular markings. Okay, there are no vascular markings here. So, this is pneumothorax. Okay, this one is pneumothorax that we are seeing and uh, very, very important. All exams generally have an image of pneumothorax and pneumoperitoneum. A history of patient with chest trauma, right? That is always there. Okay. Thank you so much, Avinanda. Heartiest congratulations. Uh, congratulations to everyone who has cleared NEET PG with good results, but also to the ones who are not very happy with the results. Remember, there's always another chance. Okay. Chalo. So, this is the pneumothorax. And remember now, pneumothorax evaluation is included in EFAST. Okay. EFAST is extended to include the pleural cavity, okay, to include the pleural cavity. Always the question is almost like what is the first management in this case? It is wide bore needle puncture that we need to do, okay, wide bore needle puncture that we need to do. In adults, it is fifth intercostal space. In children, it is second intercostal space, all right. Let's go to next system that is neuroradiology. First image, tell me what do you think is the diagnosis in the first image here? Uh, Nandini, IVH would be intraventricular, right? And within the ventricles, you would see the blood. Okay, it is, a, it is the last stage of SAH subarachnoid hemorrhage. Uh, yes, right. In stroke after CT, next is CT angio. That was last year, INI CT question. If CT angio is in the option, go for CT angio. If not, then go for MRI. Right, what is this image showing? So, basically, uh, this is an infarct. Remember this difference that infarct is hypodense because of edema. Acute hemorrhage is hyperdense. That means it is white. So, this is right-sided MCA stroke, classical MCA territory stroke. So, this is right MCA infarct. The patient would present with left hemiplegia, opposite side hemiplegia, right? The first investigation in stroke is non-contrast CT. After that is CT angio to look for large vessel block. And after that, we have MRI. The most important sequence in MRI is DWI MRI. Okay, remember it is DWI MRI. This one is your acute hemorrhage, right? This is acute intraparenchymal hemorrhage. Most common cause is hypertension. Most common area is basal ganglia. And Nandini, look at this one. In this patient, you have this intraventricular hemorrhage also. The ventricles are dilated. There is blood in the ventricles. Intraventricular uh, blood is there. Now, remember that for acute hemorrhage, the investigation of choice is non-contrast CT. For chronic hemorrhage, it is MRI. And what sequence of MRI? Susceptibility weighted imaging. Okay, remember susceptibility weighted imaging, SWI. For infarct, it is diffusion-weighted imaging. For hemorrhage, it is susceptibility-weighted imaging. Next, 
what do you think is this image showing the third image here so this is diffusely spread calcified lesions in the brain which looks like the starry sky appearance so this is the starry sky appearance in the brain which is seen with neurocysticercosis caused by tinea solium remember when the lesions are calcified the parasite is dead you don't need to give antiparasitic agents if the patient has seizures then you need to give anti epileptics only starry sky liver has also been asked previously remember it is seen in acute viral hepatitis okay acute viral hepatitis starry sky appearance in lymphoma it is burkitt's lymphoma okay it is burkitt's lymphoma which gives the starry sky appearance next one the last image here uh, where did it go okay so in neuroradiology one image on hemorrhage be it edh sdh or sah it's almost always frequently asked so make sure you know all of them okay very very important make sure that you know all of them what do you think is the diagnosis here right absolutely right this is right sided or left sided edh this is right side and this is left side so this is right sided acute edh why do i call it edh uh, because it is biconvex shape it does not cross the sutures why acute because it is hyperdense it is due to rupture of middle meningeal artery okay it is due to rupture of middle meningeal artery next one going to some radio anatomy identify the structure we saw this in the first image sap that is svc ascending aorta pulmonary artery this is the right bronchus black air and this is the left bronchus this is the descending aorta okay and this is the vertebra ct scan the bone cortex is white so this is main pulmonary artery dividing into right and the left pulmonary artery all right so look at how the pulmonary artery is to the left of the aorta okay next one what is this investigation this is mr angio you are seeing the blood vessels white but without the white bones so this is mr angio and this artery here what is this artery here this artery here the tortuous artery supplying the brain this is the internal carotid artery dividing into middle cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral artery these are the two vertebral arteries joining to form basilar which gives the terminal branch pca the posterior cerebral artery right so remember this is ica this is vertebra this is ica this is vertebral artery basilar artery this is the pca you have aca and the mca all right what is this image showing now this is mri why because i see the black line surrounding the brain parenchyma do not get confused by this white line just outside the brain parenchyma the black line is the black bone this is mri water is white this is t2 weighted mri and this one is the mid brain which has this mickey mouse sort of shape this has been asked previously remember this is the mid brain behind that is the cerebellum vermis okay cerebellum vermis so this is the mid brain all right next one this is the ct abdomen white bone ct scan right side this is the liver this is the gall bladder gray color this is the aorta in front of the vertebra this is the pancreas going from right to left in front of the pancreas air containing as well this is the stomach right this is the spleen on the left side this is the splenic vein and this is the portal vein confluence okay this is where the portal vein is getting formed and this one to the right of the aorta what is this structure this is the ivc all of this is important so this is the aorta to the right is the ivc in front of ivc this is the portal vein confluence this is the splenic vein behind the pancreas and this one here is the gall bladder which is gray color fluid density okay which is gray color fluid density all right now let's go to the next one okay let's go to the next one identifying the investigations very very important uh, let me tell you in neat pg 22 there were two questions on identifying the investigation the recent neat pg one was identifying the pet ct which looks like the orange colored ct image one was a pet ct and somehow i'm not able to recollect what was a there were two investigations which were asked to be identified 
uh, one was pet city for sure okay so look at this one and this is where we have put the most important images to be identified what is this investigation this is mrcp that is mri cholangiopancreaticography where you see the cbd and the pancreatic duct you don't see the endoscope that is why this is not ERCP this is MRCP which is a T2 weighted MRI remember there is no radiation there is no contrast which is used in MRCP what is this investigation the black bone outside the brain this is MRI water is white so this is T2 weighted MRI right remember T2 world war 2 water is white next one this is the ultrasound black and white along with that you see the orange colored ultrasound so when you see the orange ultrasound remember it's a contrast enhanced ultrasound what is the contrast used in ultrasound it is micro bubbles okay it is micro bubbles and this was the image asked in the neat pg 22 this is the ct scan the white bones and the orange orange color so when you see orange ct scan remember it is the pet ct which is now the investigation of choice for cancer staging okay which is the investigation of choice for cancer staging all right so quickly revising the mri sequences remember t2 is world war 2 water is white t1 one is your first year subject anatomy so remember anatomy is followed white matter is white on t1 weighted mri so this is the white matter corpus callosum all this is the white matter which is white t1 white matter white flare is all black the white matter is also black the water is also black that is a flare sequence look at how when all of them the bone is black okay you have the black bone so that is mri all of these are mri images okay all of these are mri images okay uh, okay, right. Dr. Veera, uh, this was not Doppler USD. So, NEET PG-22, the second investigation that was asked was Doppler USD identification and you were given a graph sort of image. Okay, the triphasic wala jo graph hota hai, basically artery ka, that is what was shown. Uh, let me see if I can uh, show you the image so that if at all it is repeated, uh, you would be able to identify the... Uh, triphasic doppler wala graph right so what image was shown okay some an image something like this this sort of image was shown and it was asked whether this is doppler this is plethysmography uh, and there were other options so this is the graph of the doppler so in doppler you get the color image like this and you get the graph also in a spectral doppler okay so doppler was asked very very important okay uh, mohan raj what is flare used for See, in flare, the normal brain parenchyma is all black. So, any pathology like edema stands out on flare. So, it's good for picking up the pathologies like edema. Okay. Doppler, mihir. Okay. So, what is the use of Doppler ultrasound? Remember, Doppler is a form of ultrasound. It has no radiation exposure and it is good for blood flow. Looking at the blood flow in the vessels. So, like in obstetric Doppler, we do a Doppler to look for growth, the IUGR identification. You can also see for artery narrowing, the velocity can be measured. Basically, for blood flow in ultrasound, we do Doppler. Okay. Okay. Uh, next one, let's go to the chest, the RS, the respiratory system. Most important images that we have here. This is the pleural effusion. Whenever you see this S-shaped curve or the meniscus sort of curve with the angle blunting, this is pleural effusion. This is not hydropneumothorax. Hydropneumothorax will have horizontal level. Remember, whenever it is air fluid together, it is horizontal. Pleural effusion is S-shaped like this. This one where you see a cavity, a lot of fibrosis, this is TB, right? A dirty chest x-ray picture that is tuberculosis. And this one again is pneumothorax where you don't see the vascular markings. And this is the collapsed lung. You see the visceral pleural line, okay? So the first one here, pleural effusion, very, very important, LSS curve. Remember for fluid, the most sensitive investigation is ultrasound. This is hydropneumothorax. This is tuberculosis and this is pneumothorax. Okay, and this is pneumothorax. So, this is the collapse here. 
all right let's go to next one uh, what do you think what lobe is affected in this patient is it the left upper lobe is it the left lower lobe is it the lingula or is it the left middle lobe what do you think which lobar pathology is this see mohan raj difference between effusion and collapse see effusion versus collapse both of them will look white effusion will cause the trachea shift to opposite side it will push the trachea opposite collapse will cause trachea shift to the same side effusion is your pleural pathology there will be angle blunting and all that would be seen okay so remember one important point that there would be tracheal shift in opposite directions okay right so remember that there is no left to middle lobe left side has only upper lobe and the lower lobe upper lobe ka part hota hai lingula so basically this question is based on silhouette sign when you see an opacity which is obscuring the left heart border it is the lingula pathology when you see an opacity obscuring the right heart border it would be right to middle lobe pathology so if you have the opacity obscuring the right heart border it is right middle lobe left heart border is lingula okay so the answer is lingula okay what is this image showing the cd scan image very very important this is the bronchus which is dilated showing the tram track sign there is the signet ring sign the dilated bronchus this is bronchiectasis okay this is bronchiectasis remember hrct is the best investigation and you will generally have a question of bronchiectasis you would be given an elderly patient with productive cough lower lobe is more commonly affected okay lower lobe is more commonly affected next one uh, this is collapse now the right upper lobe collapse why do i call it collapse why not consolidation because the fissure this is the horizontal fissure which should have been here it is pulled up the collapse pulls the fissure towards its side in consolidation remember there is no shift so when you see there is an opacity with the collapse which is pulled up this is the right upper lobe collapse okay this is the right upper lobe collapse if it was consolidation the fissure would be in its same position what is the last image showing here anyone what is the last image showing here right here we see bilateral hyla which are very very bulky showing the lymph nodes so basically the bilateral mediastinal hilar lymphadenopathy this is sarcoidosis this was a question asked in neat pg 22 also and remember that it was basically bilateral hilar lymph node is the main clue there was history of facial nerve palsy sarcoidosis can cause facial nerve palsy as well so remember bilateral hilar lymph node you should always think of sarcoidosis okay always think of sarcoidosis next one this was last fmg exam question so like we said a pathology obscuring the right heart border in the lateral x ray if you see the wedge shape opacity overlying the heart remember it is right middle lobe pathology okay this is right middle lobe this is the horizontal fissure in its position there is opacity here so this is right upper lobe consolidation because the fissure is horizontal this is right upper lobe collapse because the fissure has gone up and this image has also been asked many times in the exam where you see this cavity sort of thing there is fluid below and you see something floating on the fluid you have the history a patient is a, a patient is a cattle ke sath kaam karne wala or something like that this is the water lily sign which is seen with hydatid cyst okay that's the water lily seen with hydatid yes right the golden s sign which is seen with the right upper lobe collapse you know it would be like this it is the reverse s shape it is seen with bronchogenic carcinoma you would see the s shape of the fissure here the fissure is smooth okay there's no bulging theek hai All right next one genito urinary is something which is very very important for your exam neat pg we have seen many questions from the kidney so let's have a look at these images tell me what kind of twins is this here you see the lambda sign okay this is the lambda sign which is there 
so this is dichorionic diamniotic remember lambda lad is the mnemonic that is lambda sign is seen with dichorionic diamniotic what what is the other mnemonic modi t remember modi ji famous for t that is monochorionic diamniotic that shows the t sign right so the monochorionic diamniotic twins will show the t sign the dichorionic diamniotic will show the lambda sign next one what is this ivp image showing this is the ivp showing this cobra head appearance of the ureter in the distal part so this is the cobra head or adder head appearance seen with ureter ocele okay this is seen with ureter ocele the next one here we have the christmas tree appearance of the bladder elongated bladder with multiple diverticuli this is the christmas tree bladder which is seen with neurogenic bladder okay this is neurogenic bladder what is this ultrasound image showing this is the kidney this is the pelvis and here we see the stone why do i call it stone because i see posterior acoustic shadowing and this is a obstructing stone because there is hydronephrosis right so this is the obstructing calculus with posterior acoustic shadowing this is the renal stone right this is the renal stone what is the investigation of choice non contrastivity what is the investigation of choice for gall stones it is ultrasound okay for gall stones cholelithiasis cholecystitis it is ultrasound all right next one now these are the images that were asked recent neat pg 2022 exam this ivp image was given and it was mentioned that this is delayed ivp image we can also see that this is ivp because you can see the other side kidney and the ureter on the left side we are seeing that this is a dilated pelvic elicial system but the ureter is not seen so that means there is puj obstruction okay that is what the question was so delayed ivp with the ureter not opacified hydronephrosis this is puj pelvic ureteric junction obstruction look at this this is the cd scan image uh this is the pelvic elicial system dilated ureter not dilated puj look at the ultrasound image all this water water this is hydronephrosis puj obstruction right the other images that were asked last neat pg exam now this is not a puj obstruction why because this is the plain radiograph okay and you are seeing a calcified stone following the pelvic elicial system so this is staghorn calculus okay this is staghorn calculus in ivp if you see this is a contrast filling this is the dilated system this is staghorn calculus and this one was asked in the last neat pg exam where you see the kidney which is entirely calcified here it's just the stone filling the pelvis here it is the entire kidney parenchyma calcified kidney parenchyma calcified with the lobulations this is putty kidney okay putty kidney calcified kidney which is seen with tb the important clue that is given is patient has sterile pyuria okay sterile pyuria is an important clue for the uh, urinary tb okay urinary tb remember this is putty kidney putty kidney this is staghorn calculus next one this was asked in last fmg exam what is mri what is ct so when you see the bone which is black remember it is mri and these are the enlarged kidney with the multiple cyst so this is mri showing polycystic kidney disease this is the white bone cd scan these are the enlarged kidneys with the multiple cyst cd showing polycystic kidney disease again this is mri with the black bones the kidneys showing the multiple cyst this is mri showing the polycystic kidney disease so always remember ct versus mri identification is very very important and it has been tested many times in your previous fmg exams okay it has been tested many times in previous fmg exams all right next one what is this this is the gall bladder showing the gall stones with the posterior acoustic shadowing so this is gall stones posterior acoustic shadowing ultrasound is the investigation of choice even in cholecystitis where you will be given a patient with right hypochondriac pain murphy sign positive and vomiting remember ultrasound is the investigation of choice 
Next one, GIT, very, very important. The first image here showing this coffee bean sign. Okay, this is the coffee bean sign. This is sigmoid volvulus. Okay, coffee bean sign, sigmoid volvulus. Another very favorite with the examiners, this is the bird beak appearance. Achalasia cardia, almost always asked in the exams. This is achalasia. What is the gold standard investigation? It is manometry. What is the surgery done? It is Haller's myotomy, which is done for achalasia, right? Another important image, this is the double bubble sign seen with duodenal atresia, right? Duodenum will show the double bubble. So this is duodenal atresia showing the double bubble sign. Here versus CHPS, here the patient has bilious vomiting and it's a neonate. In CHPS, remember it is non-bilious vomiting and the age of the child is approximately one month. What is the investigation of choice in CHPS? It is ultrasound, okay? What is the next image showing here? This is a barium enema, right? This is a barium enema showing the colon and this is a narrowing in the colon, apple core appearance, okay? So this is the apple core appearance which is seen with CA colon, okay? This is the apple core appearance seen with CA colon. Okay, this is CA colon. Next one. This was asked in NEET PG 22, a child presenting with abdominal pain and uh, barium minima. This is the claw sign that we are seeing here. Okay, this is the barium minima showing the claw sign asked in the recent exam. Also, remember this is intersusception. Another sign seen with intersusception is Coiled spring sign. What is the investigation of choice? Ultrasound. Another frequent image, barium swallow showing the corkscrew appearance of the esophagus. Corkscrew esophagus, this is diffuse esophageal spasm. Okay, this is diffuse esophageal spasm. Very, very important. Next one, CVS. Another important image is here. What do you think is this image showing anyone? What do you think is this image showing? So let me zoom this image again for you. So this is the prosthetic mitral valve. This has been asked previously. This oval shape that you are seeing when you draw a line, below the line is mitral, above the line is aortic. So there is prosthetic mitral valve that gives you a clue that the patient has been operated maybe for mitral stenosis. So, you know mitral stenosis left atrial enlargement. You see this double density sign, the double right heart border sign. So, basically this is left atrial enlargement, mitral stenosis. This is the enlarged left atrium showing the straight heart border, the splaying of the carina and the double density sign. What is this image showing? This is the heart with the apex turned upwards. This is the boot shape heart which is seen with of tetralogy of fallow. In our unacademy classes also we have discussed the congenital heart disease various shapes very very frequently asked where do you see the figure of 8 or the snowman heart that is seen with TAPVC supracardiac TAPVC. Where do you see the egg on side or egg on string appearance that is seen with TGA okay that is seen with TGA where you generally have the history of diabetes mellitus in the mother right history of diabetes mellitus in the mother what is the next image showing this is the gray colored fluid surrounding the heart this is pericardial effusion and pericardial effusion the investigation of choice would be ultrasound that is 2d eco if it was calcification surrounding the heart then it would be constrictive pericarditis okay constrictive pericarditis Remember the M pattern of JVP. You have the X descent and you have the Y descent, which is prominent. Okay, Y descent is prominent. Next one, what is this image showing? This is the aorta, which is dilated. So this is aortic aneurysm showing the uh, circumferential wall thickening or the thrombus. Okay, this is abdominal aortic aneurysm. Most important predisposing factor is atherosclerosis the weak wall of the aorta all right next one what is this image showing so this is a lytic lesion in the skull which is bewildered shape it's not punched out it is bewildered shape 
So this bewildered lytic lesion, this is Langerhans cell histiocytosis, which shows button sequestrum, okay, which shows button sequestrum, LCH. This is very, very important. Epiphysis, eccentric lesion showing the soap bubble appearance, almost always asked. Remember, this is giant cell tumor, which involves the epiphysis. In which bone tumor we use radiofrequency ablation? Remember, it is osteoid osteoma, where classically you would have history of night pain, a pain which is worse at night and it is relieved by aspirin or relieved by NSAIDs. There we use radiofrequency ablation as the treatment. What is that vertebral image showing? This is the bone within bone appearance, which is seen with osteopetrosis. Okay, remember this is bone within bone, which is seen with osteopetrosis. What is the last image showing here? This is the vertebra which has moved in front. Like this alignment is maintained, here the alignment is lost. The vertebra should have been here. So this vertebra has slipped in front. So that is lysthesis, spondylolisthesis, where the vertebra has slipped in the front. That is spondylolisthesis. Absolutely right. All right. What is this one? Where you see the multiple lytic lesions like this in the bone? Multiple myeloma is another important differential here. Remember, classically, this would be an elderly patient with bone pains. And remember that in multiple myeloma, alkaline phosphatase is normal because there is no newborn formation. In osteoporosis, last FMG question, remember everything is normal. Be it calcium, phosphorus, alkaline phosphatase, everything is normal. What is the only thing which is abnormal in pagets? Remember in pagets, it is only alkaline phosphatase which is very high. Calcium and phosphorus is normal. In pages, alkaline phosphatase is very high. Okay. Next one, a quick revision of general radiology, the last few images. So this is iohexol. Remember, iodinated contrast used in x-ray based modality. It is water soluble. It can be given in perforation. In perforation, barium is contraindicated. This is mammography machine where you see the compression paddle. Okay, this is mammography. This one is a CT scan machine where it's just a single round. You can see the back wall. We use iodinated contrast here. It has radiation exposure. And this one where you see a long tunnel, this is MRI. Remember, no radiation exposure in MRI. Gadolinium is the contrast that is used in MRI and there is no radiation exposure. Which two modalities are based on same principle? Remember radiograph that is X-ray and CT are the ones where both use X-rays. They are based on the same principle. Okay, they are based on the same principle. All right. So yes, uh, that was about the today's uh, session of the very, very rapid revision of radiology. Uh, pneumoperitoneum is something that I would like uh, all of you to see because it is almost always asked in the exam air under diaphragm car radiology, the X-ray image. So look at this, when you see the air under diaphragm, this is pneumoperitoneum. You need to resuscitate the patient, stabilize the patient and, uh, you know, laparotomy surgery needs to be done to see, you know, to uh, seal the perforation, okay, to seal the perforation. So yes, uh, that was about the today's session. Okay, Zaid, a quick revision of, uh, of half-lives. So remember for half lives, I O R E C O C C. Keep saying this I O R E C O C C. I O R E C O C C. I O R E the half life is in days. C O C C the half life is in years. Iodine 125 is 60 days. 12 into 5, 60 days. I R E is iridium 192. The half life is 74 days. This is arranged in minimum to maximum. Cobalt 60, this is 5.2 years. Cesium 137, it is 30 years. For iodine 123, iodine 131, remember 123, the first and the last number 13. The half life is in hours because it is used for diagnosis. Iodine 131 is used for treatment. 1 plus 3 plus 1 plus 3, it's a total of 8 days. It's used for treatment, so it is days. Now, also your technetium 99M 
and F18. Technetium 99M is used in nuclear scan, scintigraphy and F18 is used in PET, FDG PET. Both of these are diagnostic. So the half-life is in hours, right? Diagnosis ka half-life kam hota hai. Technetium 99 is 6 hours. F18 is approximately 2 hours. That is 110 minutes, okay? 110 minutes. So these are the most important half-life that you need to remember, okay? That you need to remember, okay? So thank you so much, everyone. Make sure you are revising this images. Uh, I do hope that majority of the radiologic questions and images would be covered from this. I'll uh, see you again if possible. Uh, if you all guys give me a questions what can come in the exam, we can do a last minute revision session tomorrow evening if you all guys are in for that as well. All right. So thank you so much everyone and uh, goodbye. Take care and keep studying, keep revising and keep winning. All the very best for your exam. My prayers and wishes are 